Distance with Balboa Bakery. Back to Joe Fo in the ring, and yes, my shirt is staying on this time. And in studio again, we are joined by Jeremy Prophet, our new co-host. While Frank is away on the boat, Jeremy, welcome to the show. I want to thank you again for being here with me. Oh, of course you should be thanking me, you know, because with me here, your job becomes so much easier since I'm an actual professional in the ring, out of the ring, so I can help carry you, as we say in the business, through this broadcast. So yes, I accept your thanks and. Uh, I'm glad to be able to give you this little brush with greatness. And you're uh, pretty easy for us to hit that f that female demo, too. So, you know, maybe undo a button and uh, we'll get some more views. Oh, no, no, they got to pay extra for that. So once we get hooked up with the Patreon and they can start dropping dollars, then, you know, I might start showing a little bit more. But for now, this is what you get. What you see is what you get. And in the words of Billy Graham, what you don't see is better yet. <laughs> and shout out to Billy Graham. Uh, speedy recovery to you, sir. Wrestling legend. And uh, speaking of Billy Graham, we have someone who he himself is a good friend of Billy Graham. He is someone who is a good friend of me. And we are going to ask him the hard hitting questions for a man who is very hard hitting inside the squared circle. Of course, I'm talking about my good friend and my greatest rival, Hannibal, creator of The Hannibal TV, the top channel in all of Canada. He's going to be our very special guest right here today. Ain't that something? And he's the owner of uh, one of the hardest chops in the business, yeah. from what you tell me. So uh, every, time, every time I hear chop, I just I just feel like a like my heart just starts beating. Yeah. So like I gave you that one little chop. That was about thirty percent. So crank that one up another seventy percent, and then times it by a million. That's what it would feel like get hit by Hannibal. I tell you, he would put you right into cardiac arrest. Yep. You know. Well, I'm gonna never interview not, him in person. Not so. that you're not that you're you know not doing a. a pretty good job of that yourself with you oh. know your bad dietary habits and whatnot <laughs> but uh that shop would definitely speed up the process and uh speaking of uh, bad dietary habits we have a new whoa sponsor. whoa whoa! you can't point to me and say that <laughs> you absolutely cannot do that oh. i i am a living physical specimen oh, right I'm not here talking about I, you. i'm a nice piece of prime sexual real estate you cannot be pointing at me and saying bad dietary habits i mean i feel like you're trying to sell me on you here i'm already sold i'm already i bought in already for for our viewers out there, I'm not speaking about him. Obviously, look at look at that gun. Look at that. So when we're talking about dietary habits, let me tell you, the people at home, okay? If you want to look like me, that's one thing. That takes a lot of hard work, a lot of effort. Now, if you want to look like Kyle over here, a man who definitely likes to indulge, then you ought to be checking out one of our sponsors that we got here because they make some of the most fantastic, some of the most sweetest succulent baked goods around. Why don't you tell them about it, Kyle? Oh, you're talking about Balboa Bakery. Of course I am. So, guys, if you want the best cannolis, this guy's known as the Cannoli Boss, head over to Rue 102 Saint-Jean Boulevard, Locale 52, 
Tell them Joe Fo in the ring sent you. Get yourself some cannolis. Get yourself all kinds of treats. You can look like me, like a fucking podcast hero. Yeah. Well, furthermore, I do allow myself a cheat day once a week. So I may also be paying them a visit in moderation, of course, because, you know, you want to look like this and not like this. No, you want to look like this. But whatever your needs may be, these are the guys that you want to check out because they know how to get the job done and they know how to make your sweet tooth be satisfied, baby. Check them out. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about today in this show is uh, a lot of people have been asking me, believe it or not, why do I wear these glasses? So a lot of people think, you know, oh, you're trying to look like you're like you're a big shot, that kind of thing. And it's like, no, 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 seriously, there is a, a big spotlight here, which, you know, is very good for us in TV land, brings out a lot of the definition and whatnot. It's great. But I would be absolutely blinded because when this light hits your bald head, I, I tell you, I'm totally blind up here. You know, now I look at you, I assume you're probably bald by choice, but you know, if you would want to grow your hair out, it would probably help me to be able to take these off. And maybe once my eyes adjust, I will later on, but definitely at the start of this interview, there is no way I'd get through it without these bad boys on. You know, the sunglasses company isn't sponsoring the show. Well, they will. Oh, well, they uh, will. When you tell them, when you tell them the profits on board, they might change their mind. You wearing a pair of these sunglasses. I mean, maybe people might want to see you wear them. You want to put them on? I mean, I'll put them on, but that's no, only because no, well, my future is too bright. I, I'm not going to let you put them on just yet. I'm going to put these back <laughs> on because, like I said, I can't see anything right now because of that glare that's coming off the top of your head. So with that said. Speaking of glasses, we have uh, a contest we've been running for the last month for this book, Wrestling with Joey Licious. Friend of the show, Joey Casada. he wrote this. And the winner of our contest, Jolene588. You are the winner, so this will be coming to you. You should receive it. We're going to DM you with uh, all the info and get all your info as well. So big congratulations. This is a great book. If you like wrestling, you like comedy, this is the one you want. Also, everyone could check out Joey, uh, Joey Casada's new podcast, uh, Top Fives. Oh, yeah. Joey top Casada. Five, uh, yeah, top five with, yeah. Is it Top Five with Joey? Yeah, Top Five with Joey Casada. All right. Well, Jeremy, that's enough making fun of me. Let's get into the action. Oh, what do you there's, say? There's never enough making fun of you, but I do know that we need to be professionals on here, like I mentioned to you last time I was on. So I think, yeah, we should just invite our guest in and get this show on the road. Let's do it. Nice to finally meet you after all the uh, after all the stories we've heard from uh, from Jeremy here. <laughs> yeah, well, now I've noticed you've commented. Uh, I didn't put the two and two together, uh, but I recognize your comments now. Yeah, usually um, my partner Frank is with us, but he's working on the boat. Um, he told me he told me to mention that he's always in your lives, like every oh. single live. He's he's number one in there. So cool. <laughs> yeah, when I first got connected with these guys, well, one of them, their, their producer, I played hockey with him uh, over the course of my fifteen year hockey career. He was probably on ten of the teams uh, that I was on. And this is this is Kyle, by the way. Yes. Nice to meet you. And so it's a, he, he, as you can see, not, not very athletic. Uh, he was not the one I played hockey with. That's why I'm wearing black. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, you're doing, you're doing good. Yeah. He, so these guys, uh, you know, I've been working with them and uh, they've actually told me that your channel is more or less their inspiration to get into this. They're the only English wrestling podcast here now. Um, they're one of maybe only three podcasts. The other two are French in Quebec. So, uh, you know, they're really trying to make a name for themselves and, that's why I hooked this up so that that way uh, they can get to learn from someone who's self-made, who's been able to get you know hundreds of thousands of people to subscribe to their channel, millions of views, pretty much the leader in Canada. You're pretty much the Goliath and they're the, they're the little ant <laughs> trying to you know follow in your footsteps. Well, we're yeah. definitely the leader in Canada by far. And we are the, uh, are we on now, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We can, uh, yeah. yeah, but we're going to edit everything out, so don't feel fr uh, feel free to okay. just say Okay, I just want. wanted to know if I could start bragging or not, oh, because yeah. I won't brag that much if we're not uh, if we're not on the air. And uh, yeah, don't no, uh, we... don't uh, be afraid of censoring yourself at all. Okay. Since yeah, yeah, uh, the name of the show is Jofo. Jofo stands for just our fucking opinion. So just you know, have at it. Just say what you want. Sounds good. I'm not that explicit of. Uh, a person unless people really get me going but uh yeah we actually are uh the number one wrestling channel based in canada and for months now we've had uh 
more viewers than Ring of Honor, NWA, uh, MLW, New Japan Pro Wrestling, uh, because I track the analytics uh, of YouTube every month and, and we've been beating them. And those are much bigger companies. And even like the smaller people like Ryback TV and that Chris okay. Van Villet or whatever the hell his name is, we destroy them too. So okay. maybe we don't always have the most subscribers because people don't always love me. They, they'll uh, unsubscribe, but we do have the most uh, monthly uh, viewers, which is regularly around 6 million views a month now, which isn't bad for uh, one person running everything, but we yeah. do have other content. Jeremy Prophet has a ton of matches and, and interviews on my channel, for instance. And we have matches now from other companies too. I have affiliations now with uh, SWE Fury based in Texas, which has a show on the CW network. PW Ultra in LA, which we were really get, getting good uh, collaborations lately. And it's good to see that the channel has done so well, especially because it's a Canadian product. Um, but hearing you talk about that, it, it speaks to just how big wrestling is in the United States compared to here in Canada. Yeah. And it's something that with a lot of the guests I've been speaking to, I just I, I keep reiterating. And for our fans that are listening to this in the States, you know, you guys don't realize how you go to your local indie promotion there. You see guys that are just a hop, step and a jump away from getting signed to a big company, whereas here we're kind of our own entity. You know, no one's really scouting Canada. You and I have been doing this. Uh, I know I've been doing this for 15 years. You probably closer to 20 and have done all the right things. Uh, everything they say you should do as a wrestler. And you've built up so much visibility now through your channel. Um, but it's PCO just a show. has said he got hired by ring of honor through my channel because he got booked, uh, for Joey Janela through them seeing matches of his on the Hannibal TV because wow. when he came back, he had, what, seven or eight matches with Great North Wrestling uh, to yep. get back into the swing of things. Yep, oh, wow. and, and that speaks to, you know, how things are here and, you know, we, we do everything that's right, but really it, it's getting noticed in the States that leads to those opportunities. Uh, you know, in, in the ring, you and I have probably done just about everything wrestling, uh, hardcore, uh, you know, the promos, the putting in the time in the gym, all of that. But it's the visibility as with a channel like the Hannibal TV that's led to opportunities for all these people. And I think it's really unfortunate because here in Canada, we should be scouted. We should be getting that visibility that people should say, Hey, there's a lot of great wrestlers in Canada. You know, there's no NXT Canada. There's no uh, scouting going on from AEW. Ring of, Ring of Honor has one Canadian and it's PCO. Um, I think this is an opportunity that your channel presents for people. Uh, and it's one that more people need to realize that, hey, look, you know, we need to get ourselves noticed out there because we have a hell of a lot of good wrestlers here in Canada. Wouldn't you agree? For sure. And it is getting people noticed. For instance, uh, it's unfortunate Lady Yasmin. I'm going to say she's temporarily retired, but... She's extremely popular in the U.S. and India, of all places. Uh, her matches have millions of views on my channel, and there's several of hers that have hundreds of thousands of views. And she wouldn't get that exposure otherwise. And people know who you are more in the United States now. Mm -hmm. When I go to the States, I'm recognized more than I am here because people just like – There, people will, will tell you that it's more popular in Canada – there are some cities here where it is, but overall, it's a lot more popular in the U.S. From what I've personally experienced going to a conventions in the U.S., everyone knows who I am when I go there. So compared to here, definitely, it's way yep. more popular. I think it might just be like maybe we, we're just bigger fans. It just in the States, there's just more of them. Well, Could no, it's be. Me. It's that the business is based in the United States. Yeah. No, I mean, but no, I just mean fan wise. Well, we were talking off air about, about Twitter, for yeah. example, and how in Canada, Twitter is almost non existent. Yeah. Whereas, you know, now Twitter in the United States, that's where people are getting noticed. That's where you're getting the viral clips, the shoot interview clips, the match clips, those yeah. kinds of things. And it speaks to what Devin is saying about how his channel gives him so much visibility that people more know him from his channel than from his body of in-ring work, which is quite extraordinary. 
Um, but the channel is what leads to the visibility in the right market. And, you know, even I've been approached for opportunities in the United States. Unfortunately, uh, legal issues, visa issues, these kinds of things stand in our way. But, you know, if that was something that wasn't there, there'd probably be a ton more Canadians in prominent positions uh, getting signed to bigger companies. Uh, you know, two people that come to mind are two people, one that's sitting right beside you right here and one that's on the screen right there who realistically should have been picked up by bigger companies. But unfortunately, it hasn't happened because we're Canadian. Yeah, because you got to look at the work. I think a green card is about 2,500 American and you have to apply for that. And then the whole process of bringing you in is, is complicated unless you're going in through other ways. Like I can come there and record and do various stuff because I'm working for my company so I can have some, some exceptions. And, and by the way, there's only 4% Canadian viewers of the Hannibal TV. So we are by far the most popular in the U S um, which is one of the reasons why I got the American flag by me, but it's also because uh, I'm heading to Texas next week to cover uh, that SWE Fury event, December 12th, which I'm looking forward to. But yes, Jeremy, you're right. Uh, less opportunities for Canadians. I, a lot of people comment on my videos, like, why don't the Canadians stick together more? Why don't, like, for instance, the Kevin Owenses and the Kenny Omegas help bring more Canadians to those companies it's because competition there's very few jobs for canadians in those american companies so they'll stick to bringing in their 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 friends and not people that could necessarily become bigger stars than them they yeah don't because someone like yourself for example with your visibility alone with your channel you'd think that there would be one of the top companies that would want to tap into that to say hey you know this guy self-made blazed the trail on his own is somehow killing us in views, in subscriptions. You know, why don't we bring him in and let him at the very least teach us how to do this, how to get people talking about our company, how to get our viewership up. You know, that is something that they should want to weaponize. And I know those companies that you mentioned, like NAWA, uh, S SWE, uh, they're doing it at a lower level. But you think that these are companies that maybe don't have the same budget like an NWA or like an AEW or Ring of Honor, where they could bring you- I did you have in. an offer from NWA, but it was a very bad offer and not worth doing. <laughs> Fair enough. But you'd think that these companies, they would say, hey, you know, this guy's killing it in Canada. Let's bring him in and let's, let's use this to our advantage. Let's weaponize his ability to make people pay attention to what he does. And I think that's something you've always done well throughout your career is people will always take notice of you. Whether you come in unannounced on a show just for a match, people will always pay attention because what they see is different. And I think that's what uh, what I always enjoyed about our matches is that I knew that when I'm working with you, um, there's a certain undeniable uh, attention that your matches draw. And so if I can combine that with what I do well, it's the perfect storm to be able to do something that's going to send the people home feeling they got their money's worth and then some. Well, the good thing is about uh, starting on the, with the, the companies that aren't as big as the Ring of Honors, like the SWE Fury, is we can help them and they can help us. And maybe we can just keep getting bigger on our own because that's happening right now. And we're growing every single month. We're growing. So maybe eventually we'll just keep getting bigger and bigger. And I'll keep creating these opportunities on my own. I'm very excited to be able to promote Great North Wrestling again, hopefully in 2021 if this ever ends. And you're definitely going to see better production values and better, more fly-ins, more outside talent and better top uh, talent from the bottom to the top of the card with a greater emphasis on women's wrestling too because women's wrestling is really blowing up these days as i'm sure jeremy you know because you're you're connected with uh with a lady wrestler yep and um uh, you know when it comes to women's wrestling we see it everywhere and intergender matches too becoming very popular um you know it's good to see and if this means that there's going to be more opportunities for women in wrestling then i'm all for that because you know i i see that there are a lot of talented women out there and the big companies are definitely in need. So maybe we could be a facilitator of that 
uh, along with, you know, just being able to get Canadian talent that visibility that they should have, which is something I, I continue to preach because we have Canadians that have made it. You know, we mentioned, uh, you mentioned, you know, Kevin Owens, yeah. uh, uh, there's Chris Jericho, there's Kenny Omega, there's You're Don Callis names. and Scott Demore. There, there's all these people who are at the top. And I think if change is going to happen, it would be easier if change came from the top and they recognized that there is this whole untapped market. I always like to call it like uh, untapped oil. Because right now, WWE has their hooks in the UK with NXT UK. So it facilitates yeah. things for Europe. They're digging there. So if anyone wants talent from Europe, they're getting you know the second tier that hasn't already been taken by them. If they're in the States, they're all fighting for the same kind of talent. So now companies are left taking maybe the third, fourth tier. Canada, totally untapped. Guys that could be main eventers. And it makes no sense. In all the top companies. Like you know, first, guys, guys like, like Devin, who yeah. could be a main eventer in any company in the wrestling business, totally untapped. So this I'll is something throw Rene that- Dupree's name in there too, because uh, he's actually in the best shape of his life these days, killing it in Japan. But none of the American companies seem to show any interest in him. Because hmm. they probably still think of him as the as the French guy from Raw with the poodle. Yeah, <laughs> like if they they really know how to just ruin someone. Like, yeah, I don't. Know, who knows? Uh, but. Yeah, there is a lot of untapped talent, Jeremy. So we'll see what happens. But WWE scouts do watch my channel because I can tell you for a fact that Yasmin got her tryout last year with WWE through my channel, through TJ Wilson watching uh, one of her matches (laughs) on my channel. And when Gerald Briscoe was still with WWE, he personally told me, he watches the channel. I know Steven Regal has seen footage on this channel. And there's others from other companies, as we said earlier, um, how uh, PCO got recruited. Yep. And we have guys like Steve Austin, who has said publicly on his podcast that, that he's seen my stuff. Taz recently uh, messaged me, uh, <laughs> and he watches my stuff. So you get surprises on who follows you sometimes. But like I was saying to Jeremy last week, though, um, with all the untapped Canadian talent coming from like all the Canadian talent we've had in the past, like your Chris Jericho, your Bret Hart's, you'd think they'd take more from Canada. And if it is a v- if it's because of the visa issues, like you were saying last week off air, uh, they're more likely to take an American wrestler as opposed to a Canadian one because it's a pain in the ass to bring them in. You'd think having a WWE Hall of Famer in the White House would kind of wrinkle out that little uh that little wrinkle eh? iron out that wrinkle you think but i mean it's a it's a lot of red tape it's very political um but i think it's more of the case of they they should be looking here and absolutely here we have proof with with devin and myself with what we've been able to do that there are great talents that can be great assets to all those companies but uh, unfortunately we're fighting an uphill battle we'd all be willing to go to the united states to drive 10 20 hours We, we we've done it here I mean, Devin, what's the furthest that you've gone? I think you've you've driven for your interviews and everything oh, you've right. done. I've you've, driven to Arizona in one shot. Yeah. You from, you and I you Ottawa. and I actually we did twenty one hours to Thunder Bay. Yeah. In, in a blizzard. Boy, Oof. were those some adventures. So it's not as though we don't have the willingness yeah. to want to do it. It's just that the border is such an obstacle and the protocols to be able to do it that we can't go perform on those stages in the big name independent companies out there yeah. to be able to showcase our talent in front of the right people and rub shoulders with those that could open doors for us. So we're fighting our own our own battle here with not many resources. It's not really a level playing field. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at MLW's uh, YouTube views from the past 30 days under 2 million, I'm nearly at 5 million. So Jeremy, you do have a point. Why would companies like this not reach out to someone that's doing well? NWA, only 200,000 views. New Japan Pro Wrestling, 3 million views. So I'm, I still have almost 2 million more than New Japan, but I can't get a job in New Japan, even though I could le- both legitimately... Like, I could legitimately beat up any American that's in New Japan right now. I'll say that right now for a fact. But I, I'm also up there for, for wrestling quality. But I've given up on wrestling, Jeremy. I'm not like you. You still have the passion for it. I'm happy being an interviewer and working behind the scenes and 
and getting my creative ideas out there. But I really hope that uh, you get more opportunities as time goes on. You're the well, reigning Canadian champion. It's it's unfortunate that 2020 was uh, kind of killed for us, but uh, at least you had your championship match before the lockdown happened. Yeah. Now, yeah. Did you guys have a 30 day rule, or uh, does he does he have to defend the title every 30 days to keep it? Or well, he can't really defend it because so that is that is that, that put on hold or is it stripped? There, he he's still the champion. Okay. The only the only title that might be up in question is the Great North Wrestling Heavyweight Title, which is held right now by Davy Boy Smith Jr., who is currently a free agent and is likely going to either WWE or AEW any time now. If he goes to AEW, he might still be able to defend it, but if he goes to NXT, the title may have to be vacated. So we'll probably know the status of that uh, soon. Cause I don't think they're going to wait around to sign him. No, 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 no. I know uh, my buddy, Frank, he's going to kill me if I don't ask you about this. He is the president of the fuck you. I hate Cody Rhodes fan club. And he wants to know wh- why we never saw you challenge for the TNT title. Did he, did he not see all the videos? Oh, really, no, no. Really he did said that? he did challenge. He did. He, he did. did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he never answered though. He did answer. He did answer yeah. the challenge, actually. Yeah, he ended up answering. Yes. Uh, it was a very lame answer, which shows you how pathetic. Okay, first of all, I made the challenge because he said it was an open challenge. I am retired from wrestling, but everyone kept telling me he has an open challenge. He's fighting these nobodies. You, you got to try and get in there, do it for us. So I'm like, okay, I'll do the challenge. I even smashed a beer bottle (laughs) over my head to get attention. I had Terry Funk go on the record to say he should do it. Kevin Sullivan, Conan, uh, Superstar Billy Graham, Bushwhacker Luke, Jerry Jarrett. All of them did videos saying that Cody should wrestle me. Who, As Jeremy said, who in this world could have those six vouch for them other than really very few yeah so who. the fans were harassing him um i did two promo videos on it they got tens of thousands of views and how he responds is i guess a fan tweeted to him um why don't you make your daddy proud and, and take hannibal's challenge <laughs> something along those lines we did a video about it and we put the tweet up there and he responded, you brought my dad's name into this. I don't want my dad's name involved in wrestling uh, or in my angles. So I'm not going to wrestle the guy you want me to wrestle. So because of a, a fan said, make your dad proud, don't disappoint him or whatever, that I don't even know this fan, by the way. No. I have no idea who this person was. Tweeted that to him. He's used that as an excuse to say, okay, I'm not going to wrestle this guy. So I declared my – I am the true TNT champion because (laughs) I win by default. He said he would take on any challengers. I had all those legends back me up, and he pussies out because a fan. (laughs) And that's not even an insult to his father. That's making – No, not at all. Don't bring my father's name into this. How dare you? And his and father would probably push him to do it. Yeah. How can I be responsible for, let's say, I didn't even know you till today. What if you tweeted something during that to Cody and then Cody's going to ha- hold me responsible for what you may have, have said about his father? So it was bizarre. See, uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the things I wanted to say, and maybe you might want to talk about this or not, but if I'm not mistaken, I don't feel that's the first time that there was a uh, Cody avoiding a potential matchup with you. Uh, there, no, there was actually going to be a match with Cody and I, a mm-hmm. legitimate match with Cody and I, uh, in 2018. Was it Jeremy? The one it I ended sounds up about right. boxing match against max that yep. show, whatever show that was, it was before AEW. He had agreed to a match or through his agent. 
he had a representative at that time. It was when he was doing the indie shows. It was just be- it was before All In, I think. And he had agreed to a match, but uh, he got uh, an Arrow job for this Arrow TV show that he was involved with and had to back out. But we put on a show on a Sunday. We called it Super Fight Sunday. And we never run on Sundays, as Jeremy knows, just so Cody could have that match against me because he was only available on the Sunday. So that's why it didn't happen then. But at that time, it almost happened. So, yes, technically, he backed out of a match with me twice. You are correct. But he's a fighting champion, at least. Well, was a fighting champion. <laughs> nah, he's. They're going to keep the titles with their executives. They put it on that other guy briefly again, but they're always going to keep the titles within their booking teams. They should have kept the title on that Wyatt guy longer oh. than a month. And you notice, Jeremy, they did that right after my challenge. Like they had to get it off him because there was actually build. Um, because people wanted to see me against Cody. Which is what we do. To give the fans what they want in a realistic angle. Uh, if you look at my weekly views and my monthly views, if you add up the Dynamite viewership over the course of a month, more people watch the Hannibal TV in a month than watch Dynamite. Yes, some are already AEW fans, but there's also older fans like me that don't watch the current product. So it would have brought more eyes to it. It would have been more of a believable angle. And it was live TV. As I said, anything could happen on live TV. It would have been interesting to see what would have happened. But he blew it. It's not happening. I won by default. Well, it's it's the same point that I made earlier in saying that one of these big companies should weaponize your viewership. And if AEW missed the boat on that, which I hate to say it, but it would have got viewers. A lot of people would have tuned in to see that because of the unpredictability that this man brings. But that's not to say that a company like, let's say, Ring of Honor couldn't take advantage of that or MLW, these companies that you're getting more views than. And, you know, maybe maybe I need to advocate on your behalf because I don't see why they wouldn't do it. It is literally just, you know, maybe not literally, but it's deciding that, you know, hey, this thing that could make us money, this guy's done it on his own. Let's put our backing. Let's put our millions of dollars behind it. And this is a perfect match. Unfortunately, it hasn't happened. Maybe you just haven't made enough noise about it. Well, I'll be honest. I have those uh, Ring of Honor is pretty much a dead company to me. Like they don't really have any buzz going these days. Uh, MLW, they've got the Jacob Fatu and the Almighty Sheik. They're pretty good. Selena De Laurenta is pretty good. I've interviewed her. But other than that, which I, is I, why they could use you. Yeah. You could be the resurrection. Don't sell yourself short. You know, if you turned up in that company, that's all your viewers tuning into their shows. That's a significant chunk of viewership. True. But as I said, I'm more interested right now in just continuing to build myself under my own terms and I'm doing well at it. Um, Every month I see my numbers go up. So I'm content with this. And as I said, next week I'm starting my, uh, my invasion of Texas. So I think I'm already getting a lot more popular in Texas. I've been getting lots of uh, fan messages from Texans. So I'm looking forward to bringing a bit of the Hannibal TV there because I think it's going to make an impact. Just taking over. You're going to head out to uh, Austin? Uh, I'm going to be in Dallas. Dallas and then Daytona. I was actually supposed to also uh, be – I have I have been working with United Wrestling Network for the, since September – and uh, I do have a collaboration with United Wrestling Network, but they they closed down for December now due to uh, COVID restrictions in the LA area where they tape. But you're going to see more of a collaboration with the United Wrestling Network and the Hannibal TV in 2021. And, and they work with the NWA too. Uh, they combine for, for pay-per-views and and now NWA on their YouTube channel is soon going to start to air United Wrestling Network footage as well. So 
Who knows what 2021 will hold, Jeremy, but I think it's going to be uh, big things for uh, for my channel. And hopefully we can get you booked uh, in the United States next year, finally. Well, there's some some big hurdles to overcome there. But um, look, if, if the big guys are watching your company, then, you know, I'm your I'm I'm your champ. So, um, yeah, if any opportunities come our way, you know, hopefully we can capitalize on them and make the channel bigger and help make wrestling, uh, make wrestling great again. I wanted to ask you something because when this whole speaking out happened, um, it reminded me of the interview you did with Yasmin where you brought up the Tony Atlas incident where she was offended that they were in the same dressing room and he got upset because mm-hmm. he was afraid of getting accusations. But looking back on that now, with all these speaking out accusations that uh, that came out, do you think that Tony maybe he got a little overboard with his anger? But do you think uh, he made the right decision there by not wanting her in his dressing room? Absolutely, he made the right decision. If he's in a situation where he feels you know it might be compromising, if someone decides to. Uh, you know, get, I mean, I don't know the circumstances of what happened with her, but I think the issue was that, uh, he didn't want her changing in the same dressing room because there's always room for accusation An accusation is an accusation. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's true. So if you want to put things in your favor, the more that you avoid those kinds of situations, the better off you'll be. And I think that if more people had that mentality, there'd probably be less, if not less accusations, then definitely less room for the credibility behind them to be there. So, you know, some people have different mindsets. Some people feel, oh, we should all just dress in the same dressing room until, uh, until something happens. And then, you know, looking back at it, maybe we should have had the foresight to not let that happen. Uh, you've always been good with having a, a g- women's locker room and a men's locker room. Uh, that's the way it is in WWE. I think that's the way it is in most companies. And it's just a smart preventative measure to keep people with less than scrupulous intentions from acting on those and keeping the business a lot cleaner. Yeah, we've never really had any uh, any backstage issues in, in Great North Wrestling that I can recall, other than Wes getting into it with Max uh, on that one show. But uh, I can't really recall anything. Can you, other than the Lanny stuff? No, I mean, thinking of, uh, are you talking about like speaking out type things like men and, yeah. and women? Yeah, usually uh, because of the dressing room situation. And usually the girl wrestlers that we've used in Great North Wrestling also have male boyfriends. Well, we have the luxury with your shows of them taking place in arenas. So we usually have a lot of dressing rooms at our disposal anyways. This isn't like your little, uh, you know, running in a rec hall or in a... Uh, a Knights of Columbus kind of, or an armory, you know, where you just have one kind of common area. We have a lot of locker rooms. So that in itself cuts down on those issues. I think that that should be standard for every independent show that you have a men's and women's locker room. And that would do away with a lot of the problems. Uh, I know that in the UK, a lot of these uh, accusations came from there. And a lot of them more had to do with after the shows were over, after parties, a lot of heavy drinking, people making unwanted advances, those kinds of things. Uh, you know, maybe it's just me, but we don't really have a lot of those here in Canada. It's not really no. the culture. You know, we do the shows, the shows are done. We have to tear down the ring and all of that. Uh, the restaurants are barely open, let alone bars and whatnot. And it's just, at least for me, I can only speak for myself, but that's not what I'm about. Maybe if you ask somebody like Sexy Eddie, maybe that that's more his yeah. jam. But me... Uh, it's really about what we do on the show. That's the emphasis. So I think it's the culture. In the last 10 years of Great North Wrestling, we've really been focused on the show. And since we've been filming them, like the production, and then it takes, for instance, for me, it takes like three hours just to load all the camera stuff back in after the show. So as you said, by that time, you're lucky if there's a McDonald's open. Yeah. Let alone like the bars are usually closed and I'm done my partying days. <laughs> yeah, I was never Very a partier to begin with. <laughs> yeah, Sexy Eddie had plenty of stories about that. Well, we'll get those out of him one day. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. Well, well, Jeremy uh, used to go to the bars here and there, but he was never a drinker. He was, he was more uh, of a lay back and enjoy the uh, goofiness of everybody else. St- still to this day, I've never drank and uh, I don't see that changing anytime soon. 
And yeah, I did used to like to sit back, almost like you saw at the at the Terry Funk press conference. I used to like to sit <laughs> back uh, and, and see things unfold and uh, see how my compatriots uh, like to carry on. Uh, but never found myself on the wrong end of anything like that. Uh, you know, a few times I had to back up a few people, had to, you know, save a few people from uh, making some mistakes of, that could result in them getting hurt uh, from the wrong crowd. But other than that, no, not uh, nothing that I can think of that uh, I came across that was too offensive. Well, at least you got all these stories out of it. Though. That's the good thing about being sober around all the drunk people. Oh, yeah. I'm the get... one that remembers everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's always a good advantage. But yeah, as you said, uh, the UK culture is a little bit different. Yeah. They drink like in public there and and nobody says anything about it. And it is a thing. I did wrestle in the UK. They all go out afterwards. And if you don't go out, you're not considered one of the boys. And if you're working for some companies like uh, All Star Wrestling, which was a brutal schedule... I mean, you almost had to be drunk the whole time to put up with it. <laughs> wow, what made it so brutal? Uh, well, just like seven days a week, and then they do these Butlins camps where like you're performing twice a day sometimes, but the drives were like sometimes seven and a half hours, then you have to set up and take down the ring. Wasn't fun. <laughs> I didn't last there long because I didn't like it. I won't get into the story of how I left, but well, I know <laughs> that after a night, one of those wild <laughs> nights. <laughs> well, I know if I can share this on the air, I know that you were in talks with another company, with uh, World Pro Wrestling, about perhaps making a return to the UK. Oh yes, yeah. Um, the Han- that's another thing that was supposed to happen in October. Then it was delayed till February, and now it's delayed indefinitely yeah. due to COVID. But another group that the Hannibal TV is connected with is in the UK world pro wrestling over in Gloucestershire, United Kingdom, a very good company. They use Scorpio. I believe they've used a lot of top stars. They used AJ Styles, uh, Mara Fuji. Yeah. Yeah. And they want to bring Mara Fuji back. Davey boy Smith jr. Too. Um, But yeah, there, there's going to be a connection with them as time goes on too. Yep. So it won't just be for, for me getting footage and working with them. It'll be for all the wrestlers uh, in great North wrestling. Yep. They already spoke to me. We had a deal in place, uh, spoke directly with the promoter and uh, it was looking pretty good. But then unfortunately the damn coronavirus. Yeah. Hit. And here we are waiting indefinitely for when that's going to happen. But yeah, definitely a great company. World pro wrestling can't put them over enough. Creating great opportunities. The Hannibal TV thing. They saw you yeah. in one of the match. I don't know which match they saw, but they said, Jeremy's great. Uh, can you put us in contact with him? We'd like to bring him over too. So awesome. there's lots of opportunities. Um, I find too, some of the wrestlers that work for us don't even bother sharing uh, the videos of their matches. And it's like, you should share. I, I find that Americans are better at sharing and self-promoting than Canadian wrestlers overall. There are some, like Jeremy, of course, that are good, and Lufisto, who's our women's champion, she's good. But some of the undercard ones that maybe have potential but don't quite want to put the effort in to promote themselves, I don't quite understand that because some companies don't even film matches. Not only do we record them in Great North Wrestling – but we edit out any mistakes and we put commentary on them and they have a good base of hundreds of thousands of subscribers to watch. So why people wouldn't just retweet or, or share on Facebook is beyond me, but that that's their problem. But as Jeremy said, there's lots of good stuff coming up in the future. If this isn't really the apocalypse and, and the world really isn't coming to an end. Well, there's supposed to be a vaccine soon, so you know, once they get that rolling out, everything should go back to normal. Either way, I think it's less than 0.03% of the population that's died here, at least yeah. here in Quebec, yeah. so uh, we're doing all right. I know Ontario is uh, doing a little bit worse than us, but all in all, it's not really deaths, it's more cases, and most people are recovering anyways. So it looks like we're on the upswing. Hopefully things will be back to the way they were, and uh, wrestling can get back up and running again, and we can all get back in the ring and do what we love. Well, I think people are going to start taking it seriously now that Christmas just got canceled. So 
<laughs> well, this is going to be one of the healthiest companies because we've kept momentum going with other interviews. And as I've said, I'm posting matches through my deals with other companies. So there's momentum and we've actually become more popular through the lockdown time because people are still watching our footage. Um, so they'll be dying for an event by the time we're allowed to run again. And we'll be one of the first companies running. As soon as I find out we're able to run, I'm going to get things going again. So I'm looking forward to that. And also WWE, apparently they're not going to do as many house shows when things get back to normal because that wasn't a big money maker for them. And they just had their one of their most profitable quarters ever, not running any house shows. So I think that's going to help the independent scene because people are going to want to fix for live wrestling. Now, are you guys going to look into doing any kind of cinematic matches since uh, that seems to be the new trend? We have done some. We have you, I know, but I just mean now that they're becoming more and more popular, are you going to be doing more and more? Or? We'll see. how they, I think uh, we did one that has over 100,000 views with Amber Nova, who is uh, an American wrestler. But you know why? Because none of the Canadian ones wanted to do one. <laughs> that just goes to show you uh, how much uh, more of a drive the Americans have. But she did one that has over 100,000 views. We did the Blood Hunters Forest of Fear match series, but I think we might do more cinematic matches depending on how long this goes. But I think you're going to see more me working with other companies and getting footage from other companies because cinematic matches cost a lot to produce and there's no live gate and you still have to pay the wrestlers their, their regular fees. And for instance, the Forest of Fear there was supposed to be five matches and there only ended up being two and that cost a lot to produce, but with COVID, you never know what restrictions are going to happen or if people are going to back out. So it's better to just maybe save yourself the hassle of potential complications and wait it out. No, no. Well, you know, I, for one, I'm looking forward to this expansion of the Hannibal TV and Great North Wrestling. You know that I'm always in for whatever it may be, whether it be an interview, a match, down for anything. And um, hopefully it's going to take us to even higher heights to where we, you know, we can become number one in Canada in wrestling just as much as in viewership. And uh, that'll hopefully it'll lead to better opportunities for all of us. For sure. And we also have a TV show now, the Hannibal TV show. That's part of Zingo TV. And for people that don't get that on their cable, there's a Zingo TV app. There's also a uh, podcast version of it on the Barn Burner Podcasting Network. So we this is my first, it's not a big channel, but it's good practice and good exposure to a new audience having the TV show going to, which Jeremy appeared on earlier tonight, along with comedian Alex Wood. And I want to do like live tapings as time goes on as well and have them more uh, Jerry Springer style maybe in the future. As uh, we saw, like I did one live TV show. It wasn't a TV show. It was a YouTube show when I uh, did an interview with Ted Hart in Petawawa uh, last year. And that was very well received. And there was a conflict between Ted and I. And it got, I think, almost 50,000 views. So Jesus. I think there's a lot of things uh, that, that are going to happen with us in the future, not just in the ring, but uh, other stuff. Well, if you ever need any extras, I know myself and uh, Frank will uh, definitely vol volunteer for that. So <laughs> There you go. Well, good to know. Uh, I thank you guys for having me on, and I appreciate the support. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing Jeremy back in the ring again. I'm glad I'm to see you still uh, keeping in top shape. Yeah, well, thank you. And I, I look forward to being back in the ring. I'm looking forward to taking on any and all comers. And uh, if ever we do get you here in studio, I know this man would be dying to take a chop from you. <laughs> Maybe you've seen the video where I chopped him, and it's like he was doing his best to reenact that guy you chopped at uh, Yuck Yucks because he also tried to no-sell it, but then eventually gave in and had my hand imprinted on his chest. I'm sure you'd be proud of that chop. I'm pretty sure the next day I could have opened his iPhone with my nipple. There, there's a, so many funny chop stories I have of people that have asked me to chop them and it hasn't turned out well. Like as we were talking about on the other show, 
some comedian let me chop him, acted like it was nothing, then went to the hospital and acted like he was trying to sue me after. Oh, there was another time uh, I arm wrestled somebody in a bar and, and beat them, and then he asked me to chop him, and I chopped him, and then someone else told this guy, um, you're going to let him chop like that, chop you like that, and you're not going to fight him. And then they got into it, and it actually started like a whole bar brawl. <laughs> and there was another time some random people asked me, called wrestling fake on the street, and I said, well, why don't you do a chop? And I chopped this guy, and they called the cops on me. There's just so many incidents like this. Um, but I try and avoid them now. <laughs> I've learned <laughs> over the years, and – to, to try and avoid those situations. But See, uh, I get tons of people. They ask me who, who is the hardest person that ever chopped you? A and the answer is always this guy. Yeah. I, I would dare say, I don't, you know, and we could put it out there on the internet. I don't think there is anyone that could go toe to toe with him, chop for chop and chop harder. And not only that, you know, I'm a hard chopper and not only is he, can he give it, but he can take it. And if you watch our matches, you'll see the exchange of chops yeah. that go on between us. It, it's violence to a whole nother level. But when it comes to chops, I don't think there's anybody in the business that chops as hard as he does. If there is, I haven't seen him yet. Well, if we ever have you in studio, you just stay on the other end of the table. I think the, the most uh, hard-hitting match we may have had was this one time in uh, Cornwall, Ontario, that... I'll be honest, I was fairly drunk for that match, but it was <laughs> there was like 25 people in the crowd. And we were doing this show because uh, some Toronto uh, TV producers were, were recording a pilot. But the crowd was so bad that I knew I was going to lose a lot of money. And the honky tonk man was there and he always has beer with him. <laughs> And we just turned it into a party. And, and uh, I mean, I wasn't like, I wasn't like uh, drunk enough that I was uh, slobbering drunk or anything like that, but drunk enough that I wanted to fight. And Jeremy's always up for a fight. And there may have only been 25 people in the crowd. But the other thing was they had canceled the show on us before. That was it, wasn't it, Jeremy? Uh, so I was mad. So I was like, Jeremy, let's go in there and destroy as, mu as much of this place as possible. And we fought all through this place, uh, beat the hell out of each other. Oh, yeah. And we were both, we both took a hell of a beating, but that was one of the most uh, physical matches I had, I think. Uh, we've had some great battles, but that was definitely as realistic as you can get. We, we have had some tremendous battles and, and not just to say that the level of violence was at another level, which it always is when he and I step in the ring, but the wrestling was really good in that match too. We told a really good story. We went at it like two, like two pit bulls wanting to tear each other apart. And that's most of our matches. Um, there was but someone the, crying. Those were always the most fun to watch. If you yeah. remember, there was somebody actually in tears in the audience and you could hear it at one point in the video. Yeah, it was just I, that. I, it was so gruesome. <laughs> It was just that legit. And I also remember the one we did the triple threat with Darko, which was oh, another. Yeah. How could I forget? You really stiff match. Yeah. You pushed yeah. me off the ladder onto the concrete floor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do it. Thanks to Patrick Brazo. Senator Brazo helped you out, luckily for you, on that one. Yeah. Old double turn Brazo. You know, he, he <laughs> helped me out. Then he turned on me a couple of years later. Strange guy, but a uh, good guy overall. He appears to have conquered his demons. Don't trust anybody. Not in wrestling. No. Jeremy, I don't, tr one of the I don't trust you. <laughs> I'm not in wrestling. I'll say that, Jeremy. There, There's very few people I would trust in wrestling. Uh, Billy Graham's one of them that I would trust, and Jeremy's one of them, and Kevin Sullivan, who has become uh, good friends with me now over the years. Oh, nice. Yeah, and I would echo that sentiment back to you. We've been up and down the roads together. We've been, uh, I've seen you at the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, and uh, our friendship has stood the test of time. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad Speaking that we're still mentality, here. You almost beheaded me too in that one match. How could I forget about that? Uh, there was the one of the most brutal moments ever yeah. uh, where he came off the top rope to the outside. I was on a table and it was just cement floor 
on the outside and he landed on my head and you can see my head bounce off the cement cement floor, busted me wide open. And I remember when I went to sleep, um, I slept for like almost a day when I finally went to sleep. So I think I did have a concussion off of that. Yeah, that was, you know, anytime I see someone do a leg drop from the, from the ropes to the outside or even off of a ladder, I don't remember if it was, I think I was on a ladder or I might've been just off the the second rope. Um, It's a weird feeling because you jump and you almost have to hold back because it's not like jumping from a, a steady platform. And it catapulted me so much further. I wanted to leg drop you like Sabu across the back of uh, the back of your head, but it was more of like a like an ass drop across his head. And literally, if you watch and I watched it in slow motion, uh, I connect with you. The table gives out, and then there's a separation, and then I land sitting right on the back of your head with that Eesh. one. It, it it's just a, a perfect storm of everything that could go wrong went wrong uh, on that one. Just a bad day at the office, and um, one of my biggest regrets in wrestling was that uh, that happening to. Uh, Someone I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Um, I actually still overall like that match because we had 1,300 people there mm-hmm. and it, the crowd was was wild and they were like incredibly into that match. So as much I didn't die. Sorry to cut you off. I, I think your your camera's a little out of focus. I don't know. Maybe the connection's going bad or something. Oh, maybe. Well, I actually have to get going anyways because. Uh, my gym appointment is from 9 to 10 p.m., so I'm already going to be late for it. So we're restricted to these one-hour workouts. I can't uh, can't limit it. But overall, that was a great match, and the crowd was going nuts. Um, so accidents happen. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show and taking the time to talk with us. Uh, Ken, uh, we're going to post all of your social medias. If you want to give it a plug, we're going to add the links in when we release the video. Yeah, we are at the HannibalTV.com is the website. YouTube.com slash the Hannibal TV, Twitter and Instagram at the Hannibal TV. I'm also at Devin Hannibal on Twitter. If people DM me, I will follow them back. We have an iTunes uh, podcast version of the show as well. And yeah, we do daily news updates on my channel, wrestling interviews, and post-match videos. So as I fade away here, (laughs) thanks for having me on. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Enjoy your workout. Thank you. Got to uh, got to get these bigger and bigger and bigger. You got to trump our boy here. Oh, I'm sure he already does. (laughs) (laughs) The camera doesn't do him justice. He's he's bigger than all of us. Well, he knocked it out. 286 pounds of twisted steel and sex appeal. Wow. Intense guy. Fun guy. I told you. Jesus Christ. How many stories do you think you you guys can fill up an episode? Like, how many episodes do you think? An episode. We could could do an entire year's worth easily. Jesus Christ. Well, I want to thank you for uh, hooking that up with us for uh, for Hannibal. And also, another big thank you because we're doing a Christmas toy drive. So um, w- the way it is, is we're, uh, I'm accepting unwrapped toys, not used. If I prefer it if you just went to the store and bought toys, bring it to me. And, I'm going to bring ju- it just to be clear. They're not, they're not for you. No, 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 absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. I mean, I do play with them on my way to bring them to my friend's mom and then she brings them to like the schools and whatever. So we are accepting donations up until December 15th. I want to give a special shout out to Chrissy Colosino for her donation. Olga, I hope I pronounce this right. Boyovich. For her donation and Nick Clark, you guys are fucking heroes. Thank you so much. You're going to make a lot of kids happy this year. Uh, As I said, if you want to donate, hit me up, Kyle underscore Jopo, and I will even come pick them up. I'm coming to get them. So you get to meet me and you get to help some kids. What more is there? What 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 more do you want? Yeah, no, sounds like it's for a good cause and they get to meet you, which I'm sure will be thrilling to them. Exactly. I'm just, but I'm looking at the feedback here. I'm looking at us in the camera and I'm like, I'm wondering, you know, are they, are they maybe going to confuse you with being like uh, Uncle Fester? Are they going to confuse you with maybe being Dr. Luther from AEW? Uh, You know, you're looking like, you're looking pretty big and pale right now. (laughs) Maybe I'll make one million dollars. No, but you don't really look like Dr. Evil. You look more like if Mini-Me was exposed to gamma rays and grew to (laughs) an abnormal size. You're more more Mini-Me than Dr. Evil. Well, that's fair. I'll take it with that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, check us out every Wednesday, 7 p.m. YouTube, Jofo in the ring. And remember, wrestling is life.
This is Frank Jofo for Jofo in the Ring, and we would like to take this opportunity to share with you our sponsor, Balboa Bakery. If you're in the mood for fresh baked focaccia, an array of sliced cold cuts and cannolis to die for, and of course, the finest Italian products known to man, look no further than Balboa Bakery. Go the distance with Balboa Bakery. Located at 102 St. Jean Baptiste Boulevard, local 52 in Chattagee. Here!